This is Jeanette Horn. Welcome to the Key Performance Ideas webinar on what's new in Oracle Enterprise Performance Management 11.1.2.2. Our presenter today is our Regional Delivery Manager, Shane Schmidt. Shane has been successfully implementing Hyperion solutions for domestic and international organizations since 1990. With considerable experience in finance and accounting, he has been through numerous month-end closes and budget forecast cycles at corporate and business unit levels. Shane has extensive end-user systems administration and software implementation experience working as both a team member and team lead. As an experienced systems consultant, Shane understands the challenges of satisfying the most demanding customers and understands how to leverage his practical work experience, the proper use of technology, and best practices to maximize existing investments. Shane is also a certified Oracle Hyperion Planning and S-Base Consultant. Thank you so much for joining us today, Shane. We're looking forward to your presentation. I'm really happy to be here today to share what's new in EPM 11122. I'm hopeful to share what's new across EPM without getting into too much detail while still delivering important information. I would like to point out that I attended a three-day Oracle event in March to learn about the new features and modules, et cetera. I will try to convey what I've learned during this webinar. The agenda that I will follow at a high level is, first, I will discuss two packaged EPM application suites. The first suite I will cover is the Hyperion Enterprise Planning Suite, including topics such as Hyperion Planning, the new Project Financial Planning Module, Predictive Planning, and Hyperion Strategic Finance. Next, I will cover the Hyperion Financial Close Suite, including topics such as Hyperion Financial Management, the new Account Reconciliation Manager Module contained within Financial Close Management, Disclosure Management, and Financial Management Analytics. After the EPM application suites, I will then address the new Oracle Exolytics in-memory machine. And lastly, I will address any questions. On April 4th of this year, Oracle announced the new release of its industry-leading Oracle Enterprise Performance Management System. I would like to point out that this is a major release because it's not implied with the release number. This release introduces new application modules such as Project Financial Planning and Account Reconciliation Manager, as well as major enhancements across the Oracle Hyperion EPM application portfolio. Oracle also discusses the Oracle Exolytics in-memory machine, which provides customers with extreme performance for planning and forecasting. For those interested, I have included the link to the Oracle press release on this slide. If you're writing these down, the link is www.oracle.com forward slash US forward slash corporate forward slash press forward slash 1575775. The package EPM application suites deliver competitive differentiation and customer value. The Oracle Hyperion Planning Suite is an integrated offering to address enterprise wide needs in planning and profitability management. When I was reading an Oracle brochure on the Enterprise Planning Suite, I found it interesting to learn that a global survey indicated that 75% of corporate respondents surveyed are using spreadsheets for financial planning and control. I certainly would have guessed something lower than that. The Oracle Hyperion Financial Close Suite provides an integrated solution for the extended financial close and reporting processes. Something that rather shocked me is, when I was reading the Oracle brochure on the financial code suite, a benchmark study found that 62% of participants still rely on manual spreadsheet manipulation for reporting. I'm not sure what I would have guessed, but I would have certainly have hoped for a lower number. This section of the presentation discusses products contained within the Oracle Hyperion Enterprise Planning Suite. Some of the products or features I will be getting into more detail about are planning, project financial planning, predictive planning, integrated planning with Hyperion Strategic Finance, and lastly, Hyperion Profitability and Cost Management, or HPCM. We will cover this information in more detail a little bit later, but some of the highlights of the Enterprise Planning Suite are 
this release offers a better user experience with the ADF-based user interface revamp. A new way to manage and control project-based spend and revenues with the new planning module of project financial planning. You can improve planning accuracy through the use of statistical forecasting by leveraging predictive planning. By using Hyperion Strategic Finance with SmartView, you can ensure alignment with strategy by connecting the long-term and annual planning processes. And with HPCM microcosting, you can gain detailed insights into cost and profitability at the customer and product level. What is ADF? ADF stands for Application Development Framework, which provides a consistent Web 2.0 user experience across planning and HFM. With planning with ADF, it provides an appealing user interface as re represented in the planning form and workflow pictures on this slide. It allows for very fast rendering of very large web forms too. For example, a 20,000 cell web form had a response improvement from 55 to 65 seconds to under 10 seconds. It creates a highly optimized network throughput for very large web forms. For example, a two to three megabyte web form has been reduced to a half a megabyte. To get the most from ADF or Application Development Framework, you need Internet Explorer 9 or Firefox 10 to get the, the best performance. What does rapid time to value mean? Well, what it means is that Oracle has pre-built modules as well as applications that address industry-specific needs and if purchased, can be brought to production quicker than building custom solutions. The growing family of pre-built modules are workforce planning, which gives companies a tool to model future headcount and related expenses, as well as providing a view of current workforce expenses. Capital asset planning, which gives companies a solution that helps one manage, prioritize, and plan for capital expenses. And the new module in 11.1.2.2 is project financial planning, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. Applications addressing industry-specific needs are public sector planning and budgeting, which is a flexible web and Microsoft Office-based planning application for the public sector and higher education organizations, while balance sheet planning is designed to help financial services institutions budget for a full balance sheet and the associated income statement. I sent a tease from Oracle by announcing that a healthcare starter kit is coming soon. So what is the new Project Financial Planning pre-built module all about? Project Financial Planning bridges the gap between the detailed projects an organization undertakes and the overall corporate impact on finances and resources. Furthermore, this module provides a picture of how assets and revenues, excuse me, and resources are allocated, and then it monitors performance and provides ROI data. Some key takeaways of Project Financial Planning are, it unifies the planning process. What I mean by this is that it unifies product plans to the organization's overall financial plans and forecasts. It ensures company alignment. This is accomplished by having an approval process that is aligned to financial plans and forecasts. It supports all industries and is applicable to most large and medium-sized businesses for IT and HR projects. And it supports project financial requirements from summarized to detailed levels for capital, contract, and indirect projects. I know this slide is busy, but I think it's really important to capture and discuss the features of project financial planning, as this might be the first time you are exposed to this module. If you notice, on the bottom of this slide, I have captured the process of project financial planning. I will not go into this today, but I think it's important to have it represented while, while I am discussing the features. This also helps show the intent and purpose of the module. So let me go through these features. With project financial planning, you can import can export metadata and data by using an out-of-the-box template. You can perform planning for indirect capital and contract projects. Expense planning can be performed at a detail level or an account level, such as labor accounts, material accounts, and equipment accounts. What's nice is, you, is that you can allocate workforce resources and capital assets to projects. Additionally, this module calculates driver-based overheads for projects. Depending on the type of project, for example, time and materials projects, fixed price projects, or cost plus projects, you can perform different types of revenue planning. Because we are working in a multi-dimensional environment, 
we have the ability to view the impact on financial statements from a product level or an entity level. When I say financial statements, I am referring to profit and loss statements, cash flows, and key performance indicators for KPIs. Another nice feature is that you can rank and improve projects based on a project score using both financial measures and subjective measures. For example, ranking can be based on measure, measures such as net present value, return on investment, payback, etc. To further assist with intercompany challenges, this module allows for the reconciling of planning for intercompany projects. By use of project financial planning, you can re request funding as well as track the project approval flow. Lastly, another nice feature is that project financial planning has out-of-the-box reports and it also provides sample projects for IT. Oracle Hyperion Public Sector Planning and Budgeting addresses the unique requirements of the public sector, healthcare, and higher education organizations. Additionally, public sector planning and budgeting provides out-of-the-box configurable and expandable position and employee budgeting models. These models help organizations project and evaluate the impact of employee compensation and benefits on overall budgets while supporting accurate forecasting. Some of the new functionality addresses decision packages, including budget requests and approvals workflow, multiple notes and attachments in both decision packages and budget requests, and PeopleSoft commitment control integration, which is a two-way sync with budgets in the source system. The predictive planning feature of Oracle Hyperion Planning is an extension to SmartView that works with valid planning forms to predict future performance based on historical data. This new feature adds a new predict ribbon in Excel when using SmartView. Predictive planning uses sophisticated time series and autoregressive integrated moving average statistical techniques to generate predictions and assist in validating forecasts entered into planning. If you look at the upper right diagram, you will notice a planning form is open in SmartView with a graphical representation of prediction intervals. The business problem that predictive planning addresses is that forecasts are often simplistic, while other external forecasting tools are difficult or cumbersome to use. The value of predictive planning is simply statistical-based forecasting built into planning data forms, and that it's accessible to all planning users. Let's move on to integrated planning with Hyperion Strategic Finance. For those that are not aware of HSF, let me take a brief moment to provide an overview. Hyperion Strategic Finance is a product that integrates and consolidates financial forecast models among your corporate planning, business development, treasury, and investor relation groups. This product is ideal for merger and acquisition analysis, strategic planning, equity analysis, deal underwriting, and portfolio analysis. The new release aligns long-range planning with annual plans and budgets. The integration provides financial modeling for project investment analysis and prioritization. Now, I'd like to men mention a couple of highlights with the 11122 release for HSF. For the first time, it allows users to perform financial modeling and have free-form modeling reports within the SmartView Excel interface. And it allows concurrent usage of robust HSF features alongside other products within the SmartView interface. Additionally, there is shared connection support for easy access to strategic finance, planning, and HSM in one session within SmartView. Switching gears to Hyperion Profitability and Cost Management, also known as HPCM, I'd like to provide a brief overview of HPCM and then get into the new features of it. For the overview, Hyperion Profitability and Cost Management is an analytic application that manages the cost and revenue allocations that are necessary to compute profitability for a business segment, such as a product, customer, region, or branch. The application also enables you to use cost decomposition, consumption-based costing, and scenario planning to measure profitability and provide a meaningful planning and decision support system. The new feature of 11122 offers a new model type, which is detailed profitability. This allows for high-scale profit objects, support for micro-costing concepts, a relational storage and execution, as well as a flexible, extensible data schema. From what I understand, there is no change in product pricing and that detailed profitability models 
are another option in HPCM. I'd also like to point out that FSpace is not going away. Standard HPCM models will still use FSpace, and FSpace is a valid reporting option for detailed profitability models. Now I'd like to discuss and display some of the new enhancements for planning 11122 over the next seven slides. Hyperion Planning now uses the Oracle Fusion Middleware-based application design framework for the user interface, which provides a new look and feel for the application. Shared service groups can now be specified as owners of planning units, and any user within the group can take ownership and promote. Within the planning interface, the approvals promotion path is graphical and interactive in display. Please notice the use of pictures within the approval promotion path. I really like this enhancement as I think it adds a nice touch within the process. Composite forms can be created where one or multiple forms can be designated as charts or graphs. In the composite form shown here, only one of the four forms is a data entry form. Breadcrumb navigation allows for forms which have a right-click menu navigation to other forms to be displayed using a navigation trail that is displayed in the above form. Notice in the top form, the right-click menu allows for the navigation to the profit and loss impact form. When selecting this form, the form is displayed as well as the breadcrumb navigation. In the bottom form, the arrow is pointing to the navigation. Starting with 11.122, the calculation manager will be the only rules designer for Hyperion planning, which means no more Hyperion business rules. And a migration script is available to migrate Hyperion business rules into Calc Manager. To mention some new features of Calculation Manager in release 11.122 are script editor enhancements, such as support for auto suggestion, code completion, enhanced code coloring, code formatting, etc. You have the ability to find and replace all occurrences of a text string within the rule and template designers. You have the ability to debug and capture statistical information about business rules, components, and templates. You have the ability to convert a script component into a graphical component in the rule designer. And you have the ability to import F-based calc scripts as graphical business rules. As you can see, there are other enhancements as well. To learn more about these features, check out the Oracle Hyperion Planning New Features document in the Oracle EPM documentation library. If you are unfamiliar with the documentation library, please contact us and we'll be happy to help you locate it. This section of the presentation discusses products contained within the Oracle Hyperion Financial Quote Suite. Some of the products or features I'll be getting into more detail about are Hyperion Financial Management, Account Reconciliation Manager, Financial Management Analytics, and Disclosure Management. We will cover this information in more detail later, but some of the highlights of the financial close are, just like the Enterprise Planning Suite, this release offers a better user experience with the Application Development Framework. HFM dimensionality is now configurable, which provides flexibility to address all statutory and internal reporting initiatives. This release offers a new account reconciliation manager as part of Hyperion Financial Close Management, which streamlines the account reconciliation process for improved accuracy and significantly reduces audit risk. You can deliver on-the-go visibility into your financial performance for executive viewers via dashboard and mobile delivery with Oracle Financial Management Analytics. Lastly, HFM starter kits offer a faster time to value in addressing new industry and geography specific reporting. Let's take a look at some of the new features or enhancements for Hyperion Financial Management. A big change in this release is the ability to create an application with more than four custom dimensions. You can now create applications with an unlimited amount of custom dimensions. It is also possible to specify a dimension name and alias for custom dimensions. You will also specify the dimension size, whether it be small, medium, or large. Furthermore, you can create additional custom dimensions 
for existing applications as well as continuing to use existing custom one through four dimensions. Note that an application must contain at least two custom dimensions while the maximum number of dimensions will vary depending on the size of your custom dimensions and the type of database for your application. The flexibility provided in this configurable dimensionality feature allows for additional detailed analysis as well as reporting requirements such as IFRS, Solvency 2, Dodd-Frank, and internal management reporting. Moving on from configurable dimensionality, again, it's worth mentioning that the entire web user interface has been re-implemented using ADF technology. It provides faster and simpler standard-based development as well as a rich interactive user experience. Some of the other product enhancements are the grid designer has been improved such that you can now set up your grid layout, make column and row member selections, and configure grid display options all from one screen. The form designer allows you to create a customized input data entry form by dragging and dropping the dimensions. You can customize the point of view bar to not only show only the dimensions you want, but the order they appear in. Without going into specifics, other improvements have been made to the journal module, process control and ownership management, administration improvements, a behavior change with loading and extracting, and lastly, enhanced cell text enables you to enter multiple cell text entries and create cell text labels. To learn more about these features, check out the Oracle Hyperion Financial Management New Features document in the Oracle EPM documentation library. One more thing regarding HFM, what I heard when I attended the EPM Summit in March was that the forward-looking technology direction is S-based, meaning that HFM will be built on S-based in the future. Account Reconciliation Manager. Reconciliations are a major bottleneck in the close process, and key requirements of the reconciliation close process are ensuring completion and enabling audits. If you have ever been in charge of intercompany reconciliations, you know the bottleneck and pain I'm talking about. I don't think I need to say any more. <laughs> now, I would like to introduce the new Account Reconciliation Manager, which is part of Financial Close Management. The Account Reconciliation Manager helps organizations manage the global reconciliation processes, such as balance sheet reconciliation, consolidation system reconciliation, and local gap. For each of these processes, Account Reconciliation Manager will help companies verify completeness, track assignments, send reminder notices, manage preparation and manage review, identify risk conditions, create a central repository, and help optimize the process. I can honestly say I wish this was wrong back in my day for reconciling accounts. Account Reconciliation Manager offers streamlined, workflow-driven, and audible processes. The typical workflow contains the following steps, which is noted in the top portion of the slide. Load balances, auto reconciliation, email notifications, preparation, review, late notices, and monitoring. Some account reconciliation manager highlights worth noting are balance sheet integration using the FDM, ERPI, and after for Oracle applications. Mapping features to summarize low level balances to the level appropriate for reconciliation auto reconciliation of authorized zero balance accounts and balance comparison accounts, easy to use features for maintaining reconciliation assignments, including mass updates and import capabilities, configurable frequencies and unlimited levels of approval, flexible formats adaptable to each type of account, powerful filtering and ad hoc reporting capabilities, and there are pre-built dashboards for monitoring status aging, performance metrics, and compliance metrics. Personally, I think this is a very competitive V1 or first version offering. Additionally, Oracle already has more than five early adopter customers, which to me is pretty powerful. For those that are not aware of Oracle Hyperion Disclosure Management, it is a relatively new addition to Oracle's financial close solution. It is a tool set that enables companies to effectively create edit and submit instance documents to a regulatory agency. For example, submitting a 10Q to the SEC. Many regulatory agencies have mandated the submission of filings in XBRL format in an attempt to improve data quality and transparency in financial reporting. 
Some of the new features of disclosure management are regulatory rules are built into disclosure management that provides SEC, HMRC, XBRL formula validation support. You can click the export icon to import messages to Excel. XBRL dimensions tagged at the EPM data source level. One click XBRL tag creation. You can move your data from one environment to another with data source tag conflict resolution. Coming soon is Edgar format support for complete SEC filing creation, as well as variables to manage common text numbers across your report, for example, a current filing date. Do you want to deliver on the goal visibility into financial performance for executive users? Oracle Financial Management Analytics is based on consolidated data from existing financial management and financial closed management applications. With Oracle Financial Management Analytics, you can provide executives access to financial and non-financial data through a series of dashboards. Furthermore, the Financial Management Analytics dashboard can be delivered to your executives through mobile devices. The dashboards based on your financial management application are the Executive Dashboard, which is displayed in the top picture, Performance Indicators Dashboard, Profit and Loss Dashboard, there's a Gross Profit Dashboard, a Balance Sheet Dashboard, a Cash Flow Dashboard, Currency Analysis Dashboard, and the Process Management Dashboard. The Closed Schedule Dashboard, which is displayed in the bottom picture, is based on your financial closed management application. Enable full compliance with ever-changing statutory requirements by delivering HFM-based starter kits to address statutory reporting needs such as sustainability reporting, solvency to reporting for insurance, and IFRS and geography specific. In this next section, I will address the following products, SBASE, SBASE Studio, Data Relationship Management or DRM, Financial Data Quality Management, or FDM. We will cover this information in more detail later, but some of the highlights of the common EPM technology are there are continued S-based investments. You can accelerate EPM deployments with pre-built ERP source integrations with FDM. And with data relationship management, you can streamline financial master data management for faster deployments and improved governance. Sorry about that. Now it's time to talk about one of my favorite products, Oracle. Let me highlight some of SBASE's new features in 11.1.2.2. I have listed the enhancements, but I'm not going to cover each one as I don't want you to start dropping off the webinar. I'll just pick some to discuss. Some enhancements have been made for block storage performance. For example, cache sizes larger than four gigabytes are now allowed as the 64-bit S-based server has been expanded to accommodate larger index data and data file caches. Other block storage performance enhancements address parallel calculations, parallel restructuring, and parallel data export and data load. Some changes to the S-based configuration file include a new configuration setting, deprecated configuration setting, and an enhancement to the calc parallel configuration setting. Lastly, I'd like to highlight that some new MDX functions are available as well as some Maxwell grammar changes. To learn more about these features, check out the Oracle S-Space New Features document in the Oracle EPM documentation library. Let's turn our attention to the new features of S-Space Studio in 11.1.2.2. To provide a quick overview, S-Space Studio is a product that provides a consistent platform for building outlines and loading data. Additionally, S-Space Studio supports several drill-through options. The new features for S-Space Studio 11.1.2.2 are the S-Space Model Resync. This is a new update out of sync model option that allows you to pick and choose which models to sync without having to recreate them or reset priorities, excuse me, reset properties. There is a new streaming option in Cube Deployment Wizard. This new option allows users to select and to deploy cubes in streaming or non-streaming mode each time you deploy or redeploy. For those interested, streaming mode 
means that during cube deployment, SBase Studio Server queries the external data source directly rather than the SBase Server querying the external data source. Now, many schemas are part of the data source connection. In this release, many schemas have been re-implemented to associate the many schemas with data source connections. Enhancements have been made to the alias set. In this release, all tasks related to the alias set creation and maintenance become accessible directly in the metadata navigator. Therefore, alias sets are now treated as metadata elements, which is on par with hierarchies, dimension elements, cube schemas, etc. Additionally, there are changes to the way properties are handled in the F-based model properties dialog box. There is now streamlined modeling of Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition business model sources. <laughs> that was a mouthful. F-based studio now lets you create a cube schema and an F-based model during the data source connection creation process for OBIE. Lastly, there is support for Oracle Max data sources, which allows you to create and edit data source connections to Oracle real application cluster sources. Let's turn our attention to managing financial master data with Oracle Hyperion Data Relationship Management. Oracle Hyperion Data Relationship Management, commonly referred to as DRM, functions as a hub where reporting structures such as account and entity hierarchies are maintained, analyzed, and validated before moving throughout the enterprise. DRM is a mature product with a strong user base. It is the fastest growing EPM product and it is ERP application agnostic. By using DRM to automate dimension alignment, organizations will improve data quality and reduce manual efforts and errors. The business value for data relationship management is accelerated deployments and upgrades, as well as process alignment and simplification. I have listed the new features in 11.1.1.2 on the bottom of the slide for display purposes. To learn more about these features, check out the Oracle Hyperion Data Relationship Management New Features document in the Oracle EPM documentation library. What I'd like to do now is discuss the key takeaways of DRM 11.1.2.2. The first key takeaway in this release is enhanced data management across versions and applications. For example, you can now copy nodes and node properties from one version to another. The second key takeaway is packaged integration with EPM applications. Oracle EPM Architect can import hierarchies, nodes, and properties directly from DRM for use by EPM applications such as HFM, planning, and SBase. The third key takeaway is the ability to link DRM hierarchies, nodes, with other web resources. You can now directly access a hierarchy or local node in the DRM web client from an external document or program using a context-sensitive URL. Additionally, a new hyperlink property data type is available to manage URLs, which refer to web resources. The fourth key takeaway is the expanded and simplified usage of business rules. A new form of the validation class may be used to enforce business rules that require complex logic, which can be expressed in a DRM formula. And the last key takeaway is the localization in international languages. DRM user interface components are now available in non-English languages to support globalization requirements for international organizations. The following languages are supported. French, German, Japanese, Korean, and Simplified Chinese. I would like to discuss some new FDM ERPI enhancements in 11.1.2.2. Before going through the enhancements, I will provide a quick overview of the product. The Oracle Hyperion Financial Data Quality Management ERP Integration Adapter is a module of FDM that it enables you to integrate metadata and data from the ERP source system into an EPM target application, drill through from the EPM target application and view data in the ERP source system, write back budget data to the source system from planning in both ASO and BSO applications. There are new source system integrations for packaged integrations as well as custom data source integrations. It is worth mentioning that the new packaged integrations are for Fusion Financials, SAP ERP Financials, JD Edwards Enterprise One, and PeopleSoft Commitment Control. 
Some data submission process enhancements include those for centralized data loads and distributed data submission, to name a few. FDM ERPI now supports a multi-ledger load per location. Enhancements have been made to batch scripting and jobs. And the new data load workbench and write back workbench feature provides a user interface to perform the data load processes interactively from sources in the ERPI integrator, excuse me, the ERP integrator. In this release, there have been some data load enhancements. Some of the mapping enhancements include multi-dimension mapping used to derive target dimension value based on combination of multiple source dimension values, and the export and import of member mappings, which allow a user to maintain mappings externally. Some other enhancements for data loading are, you can now extract entered and translated currency balances. You have the ability to perform a clean data load by using the full refresh mode, and you can and you can perform explicit period mappings. Some of the other enhancements for 11.1.2.2 are on metadata or setup. For example, the ODI configuration has been simplified. To learn more about these new features, check out the FDM ERPI adapter readme document in the Oracle EPM documentation library. In this section, I will introduce and discuss the new Exolytics in-memory machine. Exolytics is an engineered system designed for best performance, best end-to-end -end experience, and best total cost of ownership. Engineered systems are pre-integrated to reduce the cost and complexity of IT infrastructures while increasing productivity and performance. Oracle Exolytics is the industry's first in-memory machine that delivers the fastest performance for business intelligence and planning applications. Exolytics is a high-performance, scalable financial and operational planning platform for hyperion planning and custom planning applications using SBASE, which enable speed of thought visual analysis without limits. Existing analytic applications are certified on day one. I'd like to highlight two key trends underscoring the need for Exolytics. One trend is ever-changing business conditions require speed of thought analytics. With an Exolytics in-memory machine, you can achieve accelerated planning cycles. You can run more complex planning models with more detail. Furthermore, you can improve accuracy by bringing more users into the process. Another trend is pervasive BI has arrived, punctuated by larger deployments and larger data sets. You can now extend beyond finance into every line of business. With an Exolytics in-memory machine, you will achieve increased performance results, resulting in up to six times faster planning cycles, five times more number of users, which translates into rather steady response times as your user base grows, and compared with similar hardware, six times faster interactive, interactive planning. With a RAM-based solution, end users will be delighted by the, by the performance, which truly creates speed of thought analytics. On the previous slide, I mentioned line of business planning. This slide provides some use cases for line of business planning. For example, store level forecasting in retail, do forecasting for consumer packaged goods, and supply chain inventory optimization. When I mentioned planning, I am referring to Hyperion planning applications as well as custom planning applications using SBASE. Using an Exolytics in-memory machine enables new EPM applications. You can create huge planning models with large dimensions and or calculation intensive models. You can leverage predictive planning for super fast Monte Carlo simulations and risk-based modeling. Furthermore, you can use detailed cost accounting and highly granular profitability for micro profitability. Lastly, I would like to mention Exolytics advantages for Hyperion planning and custom planning. You should achieve a four times to six times reduction to iterate through a cycle. More scenarios allow for more scenario analysis and what-if analysis. And you can use more detailed data to help you build a better forecast. At this point, I would like to open it up for questions. If you have any questions, go to 
viewing presenters application, select the, view, the blue Q&A icon, and a Q&A box will appear. Type your question and send to all panelists. If you have any questions that arise after the webinar that you would like to address, please feel free to reach out to me or Greg Olma, who is within the, the Key Performance Ideas sales function. Our contact information is displayed on the screen. In closing, I'd like to thank you for spending time with us today to share what's new in ETM 11122. I'm going to give it a couple of uh, minutes here or seconds and wait for some questions to come in. Here's a question around HPCM. In this latest release, will HPCM use relational data sources as part of its allocation engine? This is a great question. Yes, in 11.1.2.2, the latest version of HPCM will leverage RDBMS to scale target allocations down to product SKU levels, which now allows for profitability down to the product SKU level. This will eliminate any previous volume limitations. Here's another one. Will there be a conversion utility to go from Hyperion Business Rules to Calculation Manager? Yes, there is a utility to assist with this process. Oh, here's an interesting one from HFM. Let's see. Uh, do you foresee your clients' HFM applications expanding dimensionality? Yes, I do, but with traditional diligence around performance and optimization. I wouldn't want to adversely affect performance due to the importance of the closing cycle. Here, I'll take this one and this one here. Uh, this is around SmartView. Do you have any updates for SmartView? Uh, thanks for asking. Yes, I previously mentioned that you can use SmartView with Hyperion Strategic Finance. Some enhancements or new features I didn't cover are there are two new extensions. One is Hyperion Strategic Finance, and the other, I believe, is for predictive planning. Additionally, there are Excel formatting enhancements, some planning enhancements, as well as some new VBA functions. Shane, we're just about out of time. Thank you so much for joining us and for a great presentation.